This is the Titanoboa, one of the largest and deadliest snakes to ever slither on Earth. It went extinct 55 million years ago. But what if it didn't? What if the Titanoboa kept evolving and was still alive today? What incredible traits would this monstrous serpent have developed, and just how massive could it grow? Welcome to Mindboggler, where we explore what might happen if the Titanoboa never stopped evolving. Before we imagine a modern-day Titanoboa, let's travel back 60 million years. This giant snake thrived in the tropical waters of South America, arriving on the scene shortly after the dinosaurs went extinct. A top predator of its time, the Titanoboa was an awe-inspiring giant. Its body measured an incredible 14 to 15 meters, 46 to 49 feet, in length, with a girth of about 1 meter, 3 feet. To put that in perspective, if it slithered toward you, its body would rise to your waist. And it wasn't just long, it weighed over 1,000 kilograms, 2,200 pounds. Fortunately for its prey, the Titanoboa wasn't venomous, but that didn't make it any less terrifying. Instead of venom, it relied on its immense strength. The Titanoboa would kill by constriction, wrapping its massive body around its victim and squeezing the life out of it. Whether it crushed your windpipe or stopped your heart, there was no escape. Once the victim was subdued, it would swallow it whole. And if you tried to squirm free, you'd meet rows of sharp, backward-facing teeth designed to hold prey in place. Think you could spot this snake coming? Think again. The Titanoboa's coloration was perfect for camouflage, blending seamlessly into the swampy environment where it thrived. It would lie in wait, hidden, until the perfect moment to strike. Its diet consisted mainly of fish, turtles, and crocodiles. Now imagine if this prehistoric predator had continued to evolve. What could the modern-day Titanoboa look like? If the Titanoboa was such a dominant predator, what caused its extinction? The answer lies in a massive shift in the Earth's climate. To understand this, let's first explore what made the Titanoboa so powerful and then examine how it ultimately disappeared. The Paleocene Epoch, 66 to 56 million years ago, was the era in which the Titanoboa emerged, stepping into the apex predator role left vacant by the extinction of the dinosaurs. These snakes thrived in hot, humid environments, and Earth 60 million years ago provided just that. Back then, the average global temperature hovered around 24 to 25 degrees Celsius, 75 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. While that might sound like perfect summer weather today, imagine living in such heat year-round. During this time, Earth looked vastly different. Instead of icy polar caps, the poles were blanketed with lush forests. Alligators roamed these ancient swamps instead of the Arctic predators we see today, like polar bears. While this kind of climate would be unbearable for modern humans, it was a paradise for cold-blooded creatures like the Titanoboa. As a cold-blooded reptile, the Titanoboa relied on its environment to regulate its body temperature. Unlike warm-blooded animals that produce their own heat, cold-blooded species use external warmth to power their metabolism. The constant heat of the Paleocene made it easier for the Titanoboa to stay warm, hunt efficiently, and grow into one of the largest predators in history. But eventually, this prehistoric giant went extinct. Why? Earth underwent significant climate changes during this time, transitioning through two extreme phases. First, a dramatic heat spike, followed by a cooling period. Current evidence doesn't clearly indicate whether the Titanoboa perished during the intense warming phase or the subsequent cooling period. Let's examine both shifts to understand what might have happened. The heat spike. Around 56 million years ago, Earth underwent one of the most dramatic climate events in its history, the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum, PETM. This period was marked by a sudden and extreme global temperature spike, with Earth's average temperature rising by up to 8 degrees Celsius. This warming event was triggered by massive releases of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, possibly due to volcanic activity, the release of methane from undersea deposits, or a combination of both. The tropics turned into a sweltering, sauna-like environment, with ocean temperatures soaring to a staggering 38 degrees Celsius, akin to a hot bathtub. The PETM wreaked havoc on marine ecosystems, especially in the deep sea. 
Single-celled organisms called foraminifera, which played a critical role in the oceanic food chain, suffered mass extinctions. This loss cascaded through the marine ecosystem, disrupting the balance of life. The dramatic environmental changes had profound implications for Titanoboa, the apex predator of the time. In one scenario, the PETM may have been a boon for Titanoboa. The heightened temperatures could have provided the perfect conditions for this cold-blooded snake to thrive. Warm environments help cold-blooded animals regulate their metabolism and grow larger, so Titanoboa, already a massive creature, might have reached even greater sizes. Additionally, other reptiles such as turtles and crocodiles might have experienced similar growth due to the increased warmth, becoming both abundant and oversized, a plentiful and suitable food source for Titanoboa. The warm, humid climate could have allowed Titanoboa to dominate the ecosystem even more effectively. As fish populations adapted to the changing conditions or moved into shallower, warmer waters, Titanoboa might have expanded its hunting grounds, taking advantage of its size and ambush predation tactics to secure its place as the top predator. However, the PETM may not have been universally favorable for Titanoboa. While warm temperatures were beneficial, the accompanying ocean acidification posed a serious threat. As oceans absorbed massive amounts of atmospheric carbon dioxide, they became increasingly acidic. This change in pH devastated many marine organisms, including fish, which were a primary food source for Titanoboa. If fish populations plummeted, Titanoboa might have struggled to find enough sustenance, threatening its survival. To cope with this challenge, Titanoboa might have been forced to adapt to new environments and prey. One possibility is that it ventured onto land, where ecosystems were flourishing with a variety of mammals such as early camels, horses, and pigs. These mammals could have provided an alternative food source, allowing Titanoboa to expand its diet. However, the snake's enormous size would have made terrestrial living difficult. Its bulk and weight, optimized for aquatic or semi-aquatic habitats, would have hindered its mobility and hunting efficiency on land. Another adaptation could have been migration. As the PETM melted ice caps and turned the polar regions into tropical oases, Titanoboa might have developed stronger swimming muscles and ventured north or south in search of cooler, more stable environments. These newly tropical polar regions were likely teeming with life, including crocodiles and other reptiles that could serve as prey. This migration would have required significant evolutionary changes, particularly in endurance and navigational abilities, but it might have provided a temporary refuge for Titanoboa during this turbulent period. Ultimately, the PETM may have been both a blessing and a curse for Titanoboa. While the warm temperatures initially created ideal conditions for growth and dominance, the accompanying ecological disruptions, such as ocean acidification and the collapse of certain marine food chains, introduced new challenges. Whether Titanoboa thrived or struggled during this heat spike likely depended on its ability to adapt quickly to a rapidly changing world. This period highlights the delicate balance between opportunity and extinction. Titanoboa's fate during the PETM underscores how even apex predators are not immune to the ripple effects of environmental change, forcing them to either evolve or disappear entirely. The cooling trend. After about 200,000 years, the PETM heat spike ended and Earth began a gradual cooling trend around 50 million years ago. This marked the beginning of a long-term shift toward the ice ages, with temperatures dropping and the lush polar forests turning into icy wastelands. For a cold-blooded creature like the Titanoboa, this was devastating. The cooler climate meant less external heat to regulate its body temperature, leaving it unable to power its massive body. Without a significant evolutionary shift, the Titanoboa likely succumbed to the colder environment, going extinct around 55 million years ago. However, in a hypothetical scenario, the Titanoboa might have evolved into a warm-blooded creature capable of generating its own body heat. While no snakes today are warm-blooded, some fish, like moonfish, tuna, and certain sharks, use a mechanism called vascular countercurrent heat exchange to raise their internal temperature. In this adaptation, heat generated by muscle activity warms the blood in the veins, which transfers heat to colder arterial blood keeping the animal's core temperature stable. 
For the Titanoboa, a similar adaptation might have allowed it to survive the cooling period, maintaining its dominance as a predator. The Miocene Epoch The Miocene Epoch, spanning from 23 to 5 million years ago, brought significant changes to Earth's climate and ecosystems. This period saw alternating phases of warming and cooling, eventually giving way to a drier climate. Dense tropical forests began to recede, replaced by grasslands and savannas. Vegetation became tougher, suited to arid conditions. Mammals like rhinos, horses, camels and saber-toothed predators thrived in this new world, adapting to the increasingly open landscapes. For Titanoboa, a creature that had once dominated the warm, humid swamps of the Paleocene, the Miocene posed unique challenges and opportunities for evolution. One possible evolutionary path for Titanoboa might have led it to adapt to life in arid and desert-like environments. To survive in these harsh conditions, it could have developed lighter, sandy-colored skin to blend into the environment, reducing the chances of being detected by prey or predators. The intense heat of the day would likely have driven this hypothetical desert Titanoboa to become nocturnal, hunting under the cover of darkness when temperatures were cooler. Its massive size and physiology would have necessitated the development of stronger muscles, enabling it to burrow deep into the soil to escape the scorching daytime heat and conserve moisture. Additionally, it may have evolved a thick, moisture-retaining skin, similar to adaptations seen in spadefoot toads, to prevent dehydration in the dry climate. Its diet would have shifted to include mammals like camels or other herbivores, ambushing them near water sources or in migration paths. Capable of going months without food, this desert-dwelling Titanoboa would have been an efficient predator, well-suited to the demanding environment. Alternatively, Titanoboa might have taken an entirely different evolutionary path, adapting to life in the oceans. As Earth's climate cooled and marine ecosystems transformed, Titanoboa could have evolved traits to thrive as an apex predator in the seas. This marine version of Titanoboa would likely have developed warm-blooded adaptations to survive the cooler ocean waters, similar to mechanisms used by certain fish like sharks. Its muscular structure and body shape would have allowed it to swim vast distances, hunting large prey such as giant fish, crocodilians, and even smaller marine mammals. As an oceanic predator, it could have grown even larger, reaching lengths of up to 23 meters and dominating marine ecosystems. The marine Titanoboa's ability to travel across vast territories in search of food would have mirrored the migratory patterns of modern whales or sharks, ensuring its survival in the changing world of the Miocene. The Miocene may have seen Titanoboa's evolutionary lineage diverge into distinct subspecies, each uniquely adapted to a specific environment. The desert Titanoboa would have become a master of survival on land, thriving underground, and striking with precision when prey was within reach. Meanwhile, the marine Titanoboa would have reigned supreme in the oceans, a fearsome predator capable of navigating the vast seas. These adaptations highlight the remarkable ways in which life could evolve in response to the dynamic environmental shifts of the Miocene epoch. Titanoboa's hypothetical adaptations to these conditions underscore the resilience and diversity of life, even in the face of monumental challenges. Titanoboas in the modern world. If Titanoboas had survived into the modern world, they would have likely become legendary creatures, feared and mythologized by early humans. While these massive snakes would have had little interest in eating humans, they would have hunted large prey like crocodiles or fish. As human civilizations advanced, Titanoboas could have been targeted for their meat, skin, and other resources, much like whales. Over time, hunting pressures would have led them to near extinction, as their size and slow reproduction made them vulnerable. In today's world, encounters with Titanoboas would be rare, but terrifying. Coastal cities near warm waters might report occasional attacks by ocean-dwelling Titanoboas, while desert-dwelling tribes would fear ambushes from burrowing snakes. Specialized knowledge or technology, such as infrared detection, would help humans avoid these giant predators. As global warming continues, the conditions for Titanoboas could improve, allowing them to thrive again. Rising sea levels and warmer climates could lead to the re-emergence of these creatures, with coastal areas becoming hotspots for Titanoboa encounters. 
In the future, Titana boas would symbolize both the power of nature and the risks posed by apex predators, blending awe with the constant threat they represent to human populations. The future of Titano boas. In a warming world, conditions could once again become favorable for reptiles like the Titana boa. Rising sea levels and higher global temperatures might allow them to thrive and grow even larger. However, human activity, such as deforestation and ocean acidification, poses a significant threat to their hypothetical habitats. If their food sources were depleted, the Titano boas might turn to humans as a last resort. Imagine the terrifying possibility of being hunted by a 23-meter-long predator. But who knows? Perhaps humans would have wiped them out long before that, leaving the Titanoboa as just another legend of what might have been. And what about other ancient predators, like the Megalodon? Well, that's a story for another time on Mindboggler. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy the video, please let us know by clicking the like button, do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe.